Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, just the revelator once again. And you're hoping the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. Before we enter into today's sermon presentation, I just want to give you a brief recap of what we covered last time. Last time we focused on the desert spirit and I gave you two different presentations in which I explained about different categories of how the desert spirit operates. And today we want to enter into yet another sermon segment. And in today's sermon segment, I want to focus on a very essential sermon focus. And inside that sermon, we want to talk about the hour of darkness. And inside the hour of darkness, I want to focus on the last trials and persecutions. So, child of God, I'm praying once again and hoping that you get strengthened, you get motivated by the word of God. Let's go to the book of John chapter 16 verse 1. And these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be offended. These words that I'm about to read in this passage were words that were spoken by Jesus at a certain point of time when he was about to get persecuted when he was about to face many trials before the crucifixion. And he's saying these words that I have spoken unto you, I have spoken them so that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of synagogues. Yes, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that God is on their side. And they will think that they are doing God a service. Meaning that when Jesus is talking about a certain time that is coming, he's talking about a certain season, a season that is yet to come, a season that he had foreseen beforehand before the ugly scenes, before the ugly events. And that season is marked by a certain hour. That season is marked by a certain dispensation, a period, a time zone. And as Jesus premeditated before that hour, he wanted to make sure that he leaves his disciples prepared by the word. He also wanted to make sure that he leaves his disciples given the word that would usher them into the book of Acts. And he says, and these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father, not even me. But these things I, have I told you that when the time comes, when that hour comes, you may remember that I told you of these things before they happened. All these things that I said unto you at the beginning, I said them because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you is asking me, where do you want to go? But because I've said these things unto you, I realize that sorrow has filled your heart. I've yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Some of the things that Jesus wanted to tell his disciples at that particular moment comprised of the fact that he would get persecuted. It involved the fact that he would suffer many things for the gospel. It also involved some of the things which the disciples were going to suffer in the book of Acts. But Jesus 
instead of letting out those things, he finds it necessary and relevant to strengthen his own disciples. When he was now entering a time zone which was dangerous unto himself, a time zone that he was going to suffer many things himself. But he has got many things that he wants to share with his disciples. But he finds it not applicable and necessary and convenient to share those things with his disciples. Why? Because some of those things, they would cause panic within the disciples. Some of those things were unpleasant that were yet to happen to the disciples. So, he does not share the gravity of the information. He does not share the actual message of what was yet to come. Why? Because it would unsettle the disciples and, dis and disturb them and make them panic way before they reached the book of Acts. For Christ knew that they were still works that were yet to be accomplished through the gospel in the book of Acts. And he's saying, I've said these things unto you, but I realize that sorrow has already filled your hearts. How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. Christ also finds it easier to wait for the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Truth, who will come and guide his disciples unto certain information that he himself is not yet able to give unto the disciples because of the gravity of that information. There is truth that is necessary to be spoken in boldness and there is information that is at a certain gravity that cannot be shared at a specific point of time, especially when it is information that is bound to break people and they end up failing to fulfill their destinies. And that is the type of information that Jesus did not want to share. And most of that information which Jesus could not share, it pertained events and incidents that were yet to befall him. Why? Because he did not want any harm to befall his disciples. He also did not want anything of whatsoever to unsettle his disciples. Why? Because he had invested certain information. He had invested certain secrets inside his disciples. And knowing the works that were yet to come in the book of Acts, he did not want anything to disturb the focus of the disciples. The disciples were yet to go and wait in the upper room and receive the Holy Spirit for the sake of the publication, the word spread, the word that was supposed to reach many cities. It was all the duty that was waiting and awaiting the disciples in the book of Acts. So Christ is so away and he makes sure that if this season is yet to come, if this season is bound to come, this season must come without any of the disciples hindered by anything except for Judas Iscariot who was destined not for the book of Acts but who was destined to deliver Christ into that time zone, into that hour of darkness. Christ gives his disciples some of these 
last words knowing that hour of darkness which was the hour where christ was going to get condemned that hour when christ was going to be tried by the world itself that hour when christ was going to be handed over to the persecutors and they would suffer many things before being crucified and he said he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and he shall also show it unto you all these things that the father is are mine a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while you shall see me because i go to the father then said some of his disciples amongst themselves what is this that you say unto us a little while and you shall not see me and a little while then you shall see me because i go unto the father they said therefore what is this that which you mean and jesus in all this he was trying to give them a hint about the time that he shall be persecuted and he shall be killed and he shall die but he shall resurrect again but he could not tell his disciples all these moments before the last hour of darkness which was the hour of being condemned and he said unto them a woman when she is in travel and because of her sorrow and because her hour is come but as soon as she is delivered of the child she remembers no more of the anguish that she went through for joy that a man is born into the world and jesus gives an example of a woman that is pregnant who is in sorrow and before labor and before that hour when she gives birth she waits for that hour when that child is going to be delivered so in other words what christ is telling his disciples is that there was going to come a certain hour which was an hour that was not going to be unpleasant just like the hour of delivery when a child is being born which is the hour of pain which is the hour of pain but what will come afterwards is a child that is born which would be good news and ye now therefore have sorrow but i'll see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man shall take from you and in that day you shall ask me nothing very very i say unto you whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he will give it unto you when that time is come after that hour of darkness these things i've spoken unto you in proverbs but the time will come and the hour will come when i shall no more speak unto you in proverbs but i shall show you plainly of the father all these things jesus continued telling his disciples about a certain hour that was about to come an hour that was not going to be pleasant in luke chapter 22 verse 31 and the lord said simon simon behold satan his desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat but i've prayed for you beforehand that your faith must not fail and when you have converted and strengthened the other disciples don't forget to hold still your faith jesus strengthens peter why because he was the one that was ahead of all disciples and this was the duty of peter of strengthening other disciples 
and motivating other disciples. But I've prayed for you that your faith must not fail. Jesus is talking about the hour in which Peter was going to be delivered also into sufferings. But this is a later time when Jesus is already crucified. After Jesus has already departed and then he resurrects and ascends back to heaven. And the book of enters, the book of Acts enters into the chapter which Jesus was revealing. For say, for I say unto you that it is written about the things that are yet to be accomplished in me. And what are those things? And Jesus says unto his disciples, I sent you without a person's script and shoes. Did you like anything? And the disciples said nothing. Then he said unto them, But now that he that has got a purse, let him take it. And likewise, him that has got a script, and he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. These were also ways that Jesus tells his disciples, he instructs them to sell their garments so that they could buy swords. Why? He's still giving them a hint of what is about to happen, which is in the hour of darkness, a very unpleasant hour that was coming. For I say unto you that all these things that are written must be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me, concerning me have an end. When he talks about the things about him which are written, and that he will be reckoned among transgressors, he's talking about that moment when he is put before the people, him and Barnabas. And they said, Lord, behold, here are the two swords. And he said, it is enough. And now when he came out and went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him, and when he was at the place, he said, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them for about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me, which is the cup of suffering. Nevertheless, not my will, but let it be your will. And there appeared an angel from heaven, strengthening him, meaning that Jesus was in a great state, a spirit of depression. A moment where he was praying, but in sorrow, imagining what was yet to happen and what was yet to befall him. And an angel of the Lord came and strengthened him and held him. And as that angel held him, sweat that was drop of blood was seen falling from his face. And he prayed in agony and more earnestly. And his sweat was as if it was great drops of blood falling to the ground because of the intensity that was inside him. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping in, for, for sorrow. They were sorrowful because of the things that he had already told them that were yet to happen. And he said unto his, unto his disciples, Why do you sleep? Rise, pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while this is speak, behold the multitude, and he that was called Judas, his character that had already sold him out, and one of the twelve went before them and he drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, why do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw that, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? These were the disciples. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear, which was Peter using the same sword that he had been told to sell the garment and buy a sword. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer this. And he touched the ear of the soldier, and it was restored, and he was healed. 
And he tells Peter that he not knowing that I have got power to tell my father to give me a legion of angels. What it means is that Jesus was not prepared to fight. He was also prepared not to see his disciples facing any danger before they had accomplished their mission. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests, this is the part that you need to listen to, which then concludes this sermon presentation. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which we had come to take him, you come out against me as a thief with swords and staffs. When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not stretch forth your hands against me, but this now is your power and the power of darkness. He says, now this is the hour and the power of darkness. The hour of darkness which Christ is now talking about is the hour that he has been telling his disciples all along. It has arrived. The hour which is the hour of trials, the hour of persecutions, the hour of afflictions. That is the hour which he had always told his disciples. Child of God, I'm here to strengthen you. To strengthen you of all the afflictions, the persecutions, all the sufferings that you might be safe, uh, facing because of the assignment that was put inside you by God. The persecutions that you are bound to face in the future. I strengthen you so that you remain still in the weight. In the mighty name of Jesus.